Madeline, how are things going there? The ballroom here behind me is now filled with supporters of the Democratic gubernatorial candidate, and everyone seems to be in pretty high hopes. The people are gathered for tonight's vigil. It was organized to recognize the five transgender women of color killed just this past month in the United States. The scene is calm, but right where I'm standing only a few hours ago, the tension in the air was so thick you could feel it. Health insurance navigators like the one Hyde spoke to earlier today are in many places in Columbia, including the one right here, Columbia Public Library that I'm standing right in front of. After speaking with several people that took our survey, both for and against the bill, it's clear that both sides feel they're heading a noble cause. I'm live here on Broadway where the roads are actually pretty good right now. As you can see, they're wet, but that is just water, not any ice. Amita Creighton passed away in October of 2013. Now each year, her friends, family, and those she's inspired create this Thanksgiving feast to make sure her memory lives on. Women make 78 cents for every dollar that a man makes which doesn't seem like a lot of money, but as the salaries get bigger, the difference becomes more noticeable. According to Oklahoma Forestry Services, the Starbuck fire burned more than 600,000 acres in Kansas and Oklahoma, destroying houses and killing livestock. So for that entire time, residents were out here behind me in this parking lot, waiting in the cold in support of their chief of police. And for many of them, last night's vote didn't change a thing. When it came to losing Greg Halderman, Sturgeon residents all echoed the same sentiment. He's the best police chief we've ever had. He is amazing with the people here. We lost our chief of police, uh, the rock of our community. And they all gave the same reason for why they were losing him. Rather than just going to this man and being like, you know, do you possibly have a problem that we could help you with? They just toss him aside. Everything that everyone did last night, it just didn't seem to really matter to the aldermen and the mayor. There's friction between between certain individuals in this town and unfortunately it found its way into City Hall. Some residents are fighting back with signatures. I came to start a petition, a local petition, for the reinstatement of Officer Greg Halderman. Others plan to fight back with votes. I just encourage everybody to get out and vote April 4th because we do have other people running for aldermen and mayor this time. But some think the city has done enough to hurt itself already. There was no investigation, no suspension of duties. There was never a question of his ability to enforce the law. Yet here we are. Uh, he's terminated and the car behind me is uh, sitting empty today. For the event organizers, holding tonight's vigil was a matter of urgency. But for transgender people of color, it's a struggle they face every day. You have people that won't like you for your race, and then you'll have people who won't like you for your sexual orientation or your gender identity. Seeing the faces of the five black transgender women who were killed just last month is a feeling Gabby Hayes is all too familiar with. I think there's still this idea of speaking about us as if we are theoretical rather than we are as humans who are real and exist. Community members came to honor the lives of those trans women. They read the words of their parents and shed tears over their photos. I felt really angry and just disgusted and upset <laughs> when like it felt like every single day like I saw another like black trans woman being murdered um, and I just wanted something visible, something tangible to happen uh, to acknowledge that. But not everyone was there to mourn. Some were there to remind people there's still a fight to fight. We're not here to just mourn the people who are lost and we're there to like actively advocate for people who exist now and who will continue to exist in the future. And a lot more to be done. When we call out our families, when we call out our friends, when we call out each other, when we're open to doing things that are scary that can involve being critiqued and, and messing up, um, that's, that's the real one part of the real like day-to-day -day work that, that needs to be done and desperately needs to be done. Missouri lawmakers are not happy with all these seven-figure settlements being paid out and on the taxpayer dollar. On both sides of the aisle, lawmakers are asking for more accountability from the attorney general and transparency from these settlements. Last night, we asked you your thoughts on this issue, and today I talked to one Missouri lawmaker who is trying to get to the bottom of it. It all started with the Missouri Department of Corrections. 
Reports saying a culture of harassment and discrimination led to a series of lawsuits against the state agency, costing the state millions in court. We have been spending two to three times the money that was appropriated really for the last five years. But corrections wasn't the only culprit. We noticed that there were other departments as well that were having issues as well. And the spending didn't end there. We are budgeting some six million dollars and I believe we've exceeded 28 million I believe so far this year. Discrimination, harassment, sexual harassment, wrongful death, all lawsuits whose victims are silenced once these settlements go through. The victim is saying, oh well, I'll take this money and nothing happened. But we know something happened. On this topic, one viewer said they should never settle. Should be public info open for all to see, take to court and let a jury decide. Another viewer said, all of you screaming for court. If you lose, and they would, you incur court costs and a jury would probably award a lot more than the settlement. Fiscally speaking, it's the smart move. But fiscally speaking, lawmakers say it's getting expensive and say they can't fix the problem if they don't know what that problem is. Do we have a staff issue? Uh, is it a policy issue? What do we need to do to correct this problem? Which is why they support the bill in the first place. These are taxpayer dollars and we have to be accountable for that. McCann Beatty says another issue is that some state organizations like MoDOT, Department of Higher Ed, and the Department of Conversa Conservation don't have to go through the AG to get approved some of those funds in order to pay out these settlements for lawsuits. Now, she hopes to change that as well. Reporting live in Jefferson City, Madeline Odell, KMU8 News.